Welcome to the Paradigm Shift, episode 53. This one's a special treat. We got our good friend Big Ken coming on. Just waiting for my articulate alligator, partner in crime, the big bed, sex swordfish, sex icon, uh, all things sex really, uh, big bed Dave Meltzer, the blessed bat, the quantum quail, the giddy goose. I mean, I can go all day. I see you, big Dave. Calm down, buddy. Bring you on right now. Uh, the Paradigm Ship, episode 53. See hoops in the house. What an unbelievable conversation we had last night, Carrie. Uh, love you. So there's that. Uh, Big Dave, bringing you on right now. I, I understand that you're going to put me to shame with how handsome and cute you look. Uh, but it's just a risk that I got to take. Show continues to grow. Ken Johnson on. We're going to bring you on in less than five, brother. Uh, love you. You jug. <laughs> oh, Big Dave! Woo! Look, Look at him go! What's up, boy? He texts you every time. I do my best. Uh, I'm leaving for Saudi Arabia today. Just got back from Ireland. It's been an incredible journey, but I miss you, my brother. I miss you too, Dave. We had some really good conversations lately. It's awesome. Every time I speak to you, our relationship just grows, our friendship. I appreciate you for so many different aspects. Obviously, mentorship, uh, being so handsome, but specifically our friendship. And, and I love you and I appreciate you. So thank you for being you. Thank you for being you. And it's great to be here. What do we got going on today? Our great Ken Jocelyn coming on in a couple minutes. That's right. We're going to bring him on in, in two minutes. Um, so we're going to start. I'm going to get a little weird. Ready for me? I'm always ready for you. Okay. Uh, I was looking at your content this week, as I always do. And one thing that you posted that really stuck out to me, I thought it was pretty cool. I think it would be good for the audience to hear about this today because I'm sure somebody can relate to it in some capacity is how you react or, or how you don't when people attack you. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, when we have a need to be offended, a need to be resentful, separate, inferior, superior, people do things that aren't nice to us. And it really hurts when it's the people who we're closest to, our family, our friends, our associates, um, and it happens all the time. People lie to you. They uh, backstab you. They talk trash, as they say. And, you know, you have these circumstances. And what's so interesting is the best thing to do in those times is to think to yourself. And I'm going to use my mom as an example, uh, because I know my mom loves me so much. And I know that I love my mom so much. But at times, my mom has said things, done things that weren't nice to me. Um, and at those times, I could either waste energy, time, emotion, and value in my life, or where forgiveness lies is to put yourself into a circumstance and say to yourself, have I ever said anything that hurt my mother? Have I ever done anything to hurt my... Even though I love my mother, I'd lie in front of a bus for my mother. Have I ever done anything uh, to harm her that wasn't nice? And, you know, the answer is yes. You know, I've done things that I'm not proud of. And this is where forgiveness lies. There's too many people forget that just because someone does something or says something to attack you doesn't make that their full intention. Sometimes people are human and they do things out of ego or they do things on accident or unintentionally or intentionally, even though they love you. And so you have a choice. Should I forgive and feed that person or should I separate myself and fire them from my life? What you'll find is most of the time you've done worse than the person that's done it to you. And so forgiveness would be the blessing or the key to moving forward without wasting all that energy, time, emotion, value, and money. Big Dave's got nuggets today. No surprise there. And I can tell how passionate you were about this subject. It's obvious in your tonality. And you mentioned the word forgiveness. And I think that's so key for, for everybody on here today on this beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, when it comes to forgiveness, it, it's not only for the other person. Sometimes it, it's mainly just for us so we can let go of all that heavy weight that we're carrying around. Even if you don't necessarily want to be friends with somebody that you're forgiving, you got to release that and liberate yourself, right? Yeah, and pray for their happiness. Realize that when people are happy, it's almost, if not impossible, to attack others, right? Happy people don't attack other people. Happy people don't fight other people. Happy people don't make judgments or conditions on other people. So pray for the person's happiness that's attacking you. And on the flip side, the old expression is hurt people hurt people. Yeah, hurt people hurt people. And you see that one of the things I love about visiting Africa is we see in the circle of life, 
you see that the only animals that attack are the ones that are hungry, scared, or hurt. Um, and they're the ones who attack uh, for no reason. Now, people to survive and eat, same with animals to survive and eat, will attack prey to eat. But an uh, innocent animal that's not hungry, even if they can, they won't attack you if they're not hungry unless they're hurt or somehow scared uh, and feel as if you know they are defending themselves. So hurt people hurt others. Your analogies are second to none, and they keep getting better and better. I love you, my friend. Is it uh, Jocelyn time or not? Yeah, we're going to bring him on right now. When are you going to be in New York exactly? Go ahead. I have my April. I, everyone will have a meetup. I'm going to be there April 2nd through April 5th. Uh, okay. so, so, and I'll be, uh, I got a few things to do there, but I will be there with uh, my family and friends, and we'll do a meetup and dinners. And it's going to be an extraordinary time before I go to the Masters on the night of April 5th. And I'll be down at the Masters for my 23rd Masters. So I'm very excited. Uh, you're not going to be able to escape my bear hug, but I think you know. Uh, it's a ba baby bear hug. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Big Ken, we're going to bring you on right now, you jug. You jug. Jocelyn oh, the jug. Dave, my mom's on here. Say hello to Helene Siegel. Hello, Helene Siegel. How are you? You should be so proud of your little eagle. <laughs> my son, my son it said it was a... My guy said it was a baby bear hug. <laughs> Big Ken. We love What's you, What's up, fellas? Love you. Uh, thank you for stopping by, brother. Welcome to the Paradigm Shift. Man, love it, dude. Just took a break from Growth Con down here in Miami. Jake's literally just lit up the freaking stage. Absolutely one of the most phenomenal messages on relationship building. And, and the power of stepping outside your comfort zone and serving other people, uh, phenomenal. Communication it was all about communication and adding value to people. And I just sent a text to my five guys, um, Brent Gove, <clears throat> Randy Garn, um, uh, Brian, uh, Jafar, and, um, and Gary Brecka. And I just said, guys, if there's ever a message that I've heard that, that – gives you the formula for why I've gotten where I'm at. It, it was T.D. Jakes' message this morning at, at Growth. Bro, that boy was straight up preaching. We had church at Growth Con this morning. It was good, man. I love how important it is for you um, to facilitate strategic relationships. I think this is something that the audience can hear today that, that would really make an impact on them. What exactly do you mean when you say, I want to form strategic relationships? Yeah, so... I I think you've got to be strategic. And, and here's one thing. So I, I've got five guys that are super close to me that I text this year. Um, and these are like inner circle guys. Obviously, you guys, we're tight. But a strategic relationships for me is I invested three things. And it was me. It was me making the initiative to go, listen, I want to make 2022 strategic. That's my word for the year. In my relationship specifically, I'm willing to invest my time, my talent, and my treasure in building a relationship with you. My time, I'm going to put calendar on my time. When Dave Meltzer invites me to come out to L.A. and go to the Rams game, I'm going to go. I'm going to invest my talent. What can I do? What people do I know? What skills do I have that I can use to help you fulfill the vision and dream God's put in your heart? Not me, you. Time, talent, treasure. I'm going to spend my money to get in proximity with the people that I want to build relationship with. Yeah. So, and I'm so telling I'm you, when you do that, Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I was going to say, when you do that, it's about wanting something for people, not from people. I love and me. listen, everybody, everybody wants to be in your circle when you do things like that, man. Yeah. And first of all, I love when you say that. I want something for someone. I'm not from them. But what I was going to say is a little off topic. It's very obvious that I'm the third most handsome cat on this call. Um, I, I could tell they get something on his mind based upon the shit. What's on your mind, you Sex Panther? Well, I think it's interesting when you're talking about strategic relationships and how those strategies evolved for those people who start reaching a different frequency. Remember, the core root of the word frequency is frequent. Mm -hmm. And there's two components of frequent, right? You need to, one, be consistent. That's a frequent behavior is, is done again and again and again. But showing up is something when someone says, I have frequented that establishment, right? What does that mean? You, you have shown up for. And so in these strategic relationships, 
as you start like Ken in building the strategic relationships by utilizing all of the resources, remember the word resources well, you have a source, for me it's God, an omniscient, all powerful, all knowing source, and I'm going to live as a resource, right? I'm going to allow the source to come through me for others. And that's what Ken's describing. Now, the next level as you build and establish a foundation of five people around you, because you are the average of those five people and making the investment in himself and in others to elevate others, what you'll find is that there's a collective consciousness about sponsorship and power sponsorship. So <clears throat> what happens is you start surrounding yourself with pot five powerful open minds, open hearts and open hands. And you establish through that a bunch of people that you can help personally, and you know other people can help those people. So a power sponsor is someone that can help you and they know somebody else, a sponsor is someone that knows someone else. So what happens as this aggregates in the frequency, right? What happens when it aggregates in the frequency? Remember the definition of frequency. As it aggregates in the frequency, you become a resource of sponsorship and power sponsor and your collective consciousness and community elevates itself and that aggregates on itself so that you end up impacting millions if not billions of people in your journey in this journey and i want people to go back and listen to what i'm saying the words will not only speak with you but they'll think with you they will feel it as well with you and allow you to do what it takes to do like showing up and being frequent in your frequency okay i'm gonna give you bombs that's bombs bro that's bombs. The whole absolute fire I, I love you both so much. And for the audience listening, guys, like I'm not the smartest room in the cabinet in, in cat in the room right now, and that's the way to go. Listen to what Dave and Ken are saying. Grab a pen, grab a journal. Like, take this stuff seriously. This is priceless. Ken, what were you gonna say, brother? No, dude, that's that's bombs. I mean, that, that literally is everything. Listen, I wasn't coming to GrowthCon this year. I wasn't coming. I was supposed to be at Secret Knock this year with Greg. And I, I literally sent Greg a I was on a call. We're doing a one-day event with, with Gary Brecker, Dr. T, and Dr. Rob in Atlanta. We were on a Zoom call two weeks ago. And I said, Gary, are you doing – are you speaking at GrowthCon? He's like, dude, I've got a 90-minute session Friday afternoon. And I paused, and I said, I'll be there. I bought a, a $10,000 ticket. I rearranged all my – I rearranged all my travel plans, and I flew down to Miami, obviously to connect with everybody and grant everybody. But I was there to help Gary know – Dude, I'm sitting right here on the second row, and I'm here for you. I'm here to support you, and I wanted him to know that. Like, this is why I am here. And I wasn't coming. I changed my plans to support him, you know, in his the, his moment. And, uh, and, dude, he absolutely, just like you did at, at my conference, just like you've done everything you guys have seen him speak at, absolutely lit the stage up yesterday. Yeah, this is awesome. This is gold. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys both this because all three of us did something in common and what we did was a little bit later in life, we all reinvented ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to ask you, Ken, like, what was that process like for you to step away from one season and, and completely step into something else with what you're doing now with all the amazing stuff with GSD and so forth? Yeah, so a lot of people ask me all the time, do you miss pastoring full-time? I spent 12 of the last 25 years in full-time vocational ministry, which means that's what I got paid to do. And if you know anything about ministry, I didn't get paid much. <laughs> you know, you're making 60, 70 grand a year doing ministry, and you're serving and serving and serving. And when that season was over, we started GSD, coaching, consulting. And people go, do you miss pastoring a church on Sunday? And my response has always been, listen, I get to pastor people right now that would never come to my church, ever come to my church on a Sunday. I've got, I've got Muslims in my group. I've got Christians in my group. I've got atheists in my, I've got all kinds of people. And I said this on one of my videos last week um, that my team posted on Instagram. God, Jesus has called us to be salt and light and love people. I, I'm not to love somebody because they believe the same as me or they don't believe the same as me. I'm not to do for somebody because they believe the same as me or don't believe the same as me. Jesus called me to love people. And if you look at the only people Jesus got pissed off at or hacked off at, it was religious people who stood in the way of people who didn't know God coming to know God. Big day. What's on your mind? <laughs> yeah, you know, as I got older, my seasons became shorter. That's Ooh. because I live in radical humility as I know my faith being that there is something bigger than me that doesn't separate us by religion, doesn't separate us by race, it doesn't separate us by size or sex. It's the complete 
equalizer. When you talk about equity and inclusion, it's the omniscient, all-powerful, abundant universe of infinity that allows us to be one. I stated earlier this week a true epiphany for me, which is that I expect miracles because of who I am. Mm. I will receive miracles because of who God is. Mm. And I will offer miracles because I am part of God. And this is what Ken is saying. And instead of thinking in terms of man-made constructive time that somehow we have entered a new season, as I stated, my seasons have shortened because the infinity of time has lengthened, meaning that if I have infinite time and infinite patience, everything happens immediately. So this is why daily practices, suffering from discipline, not suffering from regret, but yes. suffering from the daily activities of change with radical humility that I don't know what I don't know, but I do know who is always walking with me to offer me so I can offer miracles to all as Ken and I both are on the exact same journey different backgrounds, different changes, different growth, but we are both here to aggregate the belief of happiness, the ability to make abundance, to make a lot of money. That's the currency, the object of energy here in the world that we put into the flow to help others, to help others, and most importantly, to be happy. Because as we started this conversation, happy people don't attack. Happy mm. people don't separate. Happy people don't hurt. So in essence, utilizing the season of infancy, the season of instantaneous results by radical humility, we can create aggregated change of happiness for all. And that's why I show up every single week for you, Eagle, every single week, every Saturday, 101 times in a row without missing, because it's that important to bring on other souls, like my brother, Ken Johnson, who provides platforms for people to sit here with us in the room of improvement. And that's where we sit every day. So bless you guys both. And I appreciate both of you so much. And that's why I show up for you, uh, Eagle, and you can anytime you ask. I love you guys. Really deep dialogue. Uh, I love it. I love both of you. This was extra special for me today because you guys are legitimately my best friends in the world. <laughs> and I see the smile on your face. Yeah. Why don't you leave us with one final nugget and take us home, brother? Yeah, I used to say every Sunday in my church that God's love for you isn't predicated on your performance. He loves you because he created you. He loves you because you're a son or a daughter. There was one Sunday I brought my, well, my 13-year-old, who's five foot ten now, plays five on her basketball team, eighth grade county champions. Come on, somebody. Um, <laughs> I, brought her, I brought her up on stage when she was about three years old on a Sunday. We did about two. We did about two songs in our in our worship set, and I, I had him bring a chair up on stage, and I had him walk her in there. She was three, so cute, long curly hair, and I, I brought her up and I set her in my lap, and I said, "Hey, baby," I said, "I said, you know, she's shy," and I had everybody sit for just a minute, and I said, "Say hi." There's a few hundred people in my, you know, in my church that, in that service, and I said, um, "Why don't you tell everybody how you drew on your sister's door with a crayon this week?" She looked at me like, "What, is, Dad? What are you doing?" And I said, guys, let me tell you something. As beautiful as she is, I don't love her because of how she behaves. I love her because she's my daughter. And she's always welcome in my presence, no matter if she performs well or if she doesn't perform well. And God's the same way. We have this religion and, and the, 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 um, the, the, what, we, what we know as or what we hear a lot of times in religion is it's like God's this, God's this omnipotent being that has this like – this heavenly refrigerator with your picture on it, Craig. And if you do good, it stays on the front. But if he's got, if you've got friends coming over and Craig hasn't been a good boy this week, he's going to take your picture and move it over to the side of the refrigerator because he's embarrassed of you as a child. And that's just not who God is. It's not who the gospel says he is. It's not who Jesus proclaimed him to be. He loves you because you're a son or a daughter, not because of what you do. It's not a checklist or checking off boxes. And when you understand that, it's, a, it's an inward change that causes an outward expression for you to be able to love people the way that God desires for you to love people. You're such a jug. <laughs> dude, it took me a long time to learn that, dude. It took me a long time to learn that. Yeah, this was deep stuff today. This was a little bit different. And for the right reasons, and for the audience, we just wanted to stop by on a Saturday morning and, and drop you with some deep, profound, powerful nuggets. Any final word, Big Dave? Come on, everybody. Just realize that this foundational information that you should go back into study, 
pay attention and give your five levels of levels of intention. Do as we say, say as we say, think as we say, believe as we say, and feel as we say one thing, that there is something bigger than you that loves you more than your mama loves you, more than you love your own children. That's that picture on the front of the fridge that stays there every day, all day long. Nobody's being punished. We're all being promoted and protected, just as if you would protect and promote your child, just as if your mama has protected and promoted you at all times. This is what we are talking about. If there's ever an episode of 101 episodes with the greatest souls that have joined us, please go back and to listen to this one. It will have the most impact to elevate others, to elevate yourself. Be more interested and interesting. Be kind to your future self. Do good deeds. I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy. Say hi to everyone at GrowthCon, my brother. Great to see yes, you. Sir. I love you, man. Hey, can I shout out real quick to Dave? Uh, there, there, are, there are a handful of guys in my life over the past couple of years that have made big differences, huge differences. And Dave Meltzer is one of those guys. When you get a guy like Dave Meltzer that believes in you and shows up and does, and, and he's, he's there for you, it, it, it literally gives you the confidence and belief that there is nothing in the world you can't accomplish. Dave, I love you, buddy. I'm super grateful for you, man. I definitely I love you. Uh, Ken, I love you, big bro. Thank you so much for joining us today. We would have it no other way. And I can't wait to see you again. And I'll shoot you a text a little bit later. Love you, home. Bye, Joe. Go, guys. Go Peacocks. See you later. Oh, baby. <laughs> Bye, guys. Hey. Too much fun. The Power Time Shift, episode 53 in the books. Everybody's out today. Look at you all. Oh, yes. Alex, C. Hoops, uh, Leska. Uh, oh, yes. You guys are going nuts. Uh, Kim. Okay. Monica, who I'm going to see soon. Mikey Conklin. Uh, <laughs> not today. Oh, yes. I uh, see Frogs. Uh, Mon. Uh, oh, Jesse. Alex. You guys are on fire. Christine. I love you so much that it's probably concerning. Pablo. Uh, all right, guys. Have an unbelievable rest of the weekend. Rachie, sharpen the axe. Uh, like Big Dave said, do some good deeds. Um, just be a better person. Work on kindness. Sharpen your mind. Understand that where you're at now is not an indication of where you can be, right? You can do anything that you want in this world if you have two very important traits, self-belief and grit. And if you maintain those and you work on those and you cultivate them, there is nothing that you can't accomplish. So believe in yourself, believe in your vision, and understand the difference between goals and commitments. Everybody has goals. They're a dime a dozen. In fact, a lot of people have the same goals. But what are your commitments? What are you committed to doing today? I love you guys. Have a good weekend.